This video demonstrates how to determine the solvent resistance of an organic coating using a mechanical rubbing machine in accordance with ASTM test method D7835. Most coil coatings chemically change during the curing process. This change is commonly referred to as cross-linking, and coil coatings such as epoxies, polyesters and urethanes become more resistant to solvents as they cure and cross-link. This resistance to solvent is an indication of the degree of cross-linking. An insufficient level of cure is characterized by not enough double rubs. An overbake condition is characterized by an excessive number of rubs. Both conditions may affect the long-term durability of the coating. Rubbing a cured coating with a cloth saturated with an appropriate solvent is one way to determine whether a proper level of cure is reached. In this video, a mechanical rubbing machine for assessing the solvent resistance of an organic coating is used. This automated machine is used to test the solvent resistance of a coating by rubbing a cloth saturated with solvent across the coating and counting the number of strokes or double rubs before the coating ruptures or fails. A double rub is defined as one complete forward and backward stroke over a coated surfing under specific conditions. Typical parameters required to perform this test are the force applied by the weighted probe held perpendicular to the surface, the length of the travel of the probe, and rate of stroke. In other words, the number of rubs each second. The mechanical rubbing machine provides consistent stroke length, rate, pressure, and contact area that are not subject to variables such as human fatigue. Also, exposure to the solvent used is minimized when using a rubbing machine. The test solvent used in the rub machine has a significant effect on the number of double rubs measured. Common solvents used for these tests include methyl ethyl ketone, methyl isobutyl ketone, and isopropyl alcohol. The specific solvent to be used and the number of double rubs to be achieved must be agreed upon between producer and user for any given coating system. The first step is to obtain a representative coated flat panel which has been cut to an appropriate size for the test machine. If possible, use a panel of sufficient length to allow an 8-inch long test surface with a 1-inch width. The long dimension must be parallel to the rolling or longitudinal direction of the coil for coil coatings. It is imperative that the sample be flat surface without any high or low points in the panel testing area since this could result in false outcomes. Clamp the panel to be tested into position with the long dimension parallel to both the rubbing direction of the machine and the rolling direction for coil coatings in accordance with the machine manufacturer's recommendations. Set the machine counter to the desired number of rubs. Select the agreed upon solvent for the test and be sure that the solvent reservoir is filled as recommended by the rub machine equipment manufacturer and that the pump setting is correct. If not, too much or not enough solvent may be delivered to the testing pad, which may lead to false results. And place the probe with cheesecloth or other agreed upon material in position on the test panel. Be sure the cloth is saturated with solvent from the reservoir or that it has been primed with solvent using a squeeze bottle to wet the cloth before use. Start the machine. The test may be run in two different ways. In the first method, the machine is allowed to run for the set number of counts as agreed upon between producer and user, and afterwards the coating is inspected for the appearance of the substrate or coating breakthrough. In this method, the result is pass or fail. In the second method, the machine is also allowed to run until the operator observes the appearance of the substrate or coating breakthrough. The number of double rubs on the machine counter is recorded. The second method may be more useful for research or cases where comparison of continuous data is desired. Under this condition, the operator should always watch the machine while running and not step away. The machine does not stop when a failure occurs. It must be manually shut off by the operator. It is recommended that any breakthrough that is observed, a half inch from either end of the stroke, be disregarded. Failures at these stroke turnaround locations are often heel break, 
and are not indicative of the actual solvent resistance of the coating. The size or length of this area at each end of the stroke to be disregarded must be agreed upon between producer and user. If it is necessary, replace the cloth for each test or after a certain number of double rubs as agreed upon between the producer and user.